Oh, this is the lamb head? Yes, it's the lamb head. Oh, that is crazy. That's the whole lamb head. <laughs> so if you guys are looking for a really delicious restaurant, then I guess you found your spot right here. This is San Diego. It is one of the major cities in Southern California. About 1.3 million people live here, and many more visit the city each year for some amazing sights and some amazing food. Have you been? Hey there, this is Steve from Rockstar Eater, and in this episode, I'm gonna be taking you on one of my epic 72-hour trips to San Diego, California. In this full documentary, you'll see some of the great places you can eat at and the great places you can visit, especially if you are visiting SD for the first time. It is all here in one big episode. So I hope you are ready for a big adventure because this is one of the biggest San Diego food and travel videos you're gonna find anywhere on YouTube. And also if you're new to this channel, take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't wanna miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And with that being said, let's go to San Diego. The first stop on day one is De Cabeza El Unico, which is one of the top rated Mexican restaurants in San Diego County. This place serves some of the most authentic Mexican food in Southern California. How authentic is it? Well, if they have cow brains and grasshoppers on the menu, you know you've come to the right spot. Oh, wow, this is all the tongue? Yeah, yeah that's tongue. the tongue, lip. Tongue, the lip, and then meat. cheek meat. What is this one? This is the cheek. The cheek? Yeah. Oh man, this is hardcore. This is the cow cheek, right? So you chop to make the taco and the, uh, the soup, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so this has a little bit of everything, right? Yeah, a little bit of everything. Okay, you said uh, cheek, cheek meat, meat, tongue, and lip. Tongue and lip. This one right here, the flautas roll tacos. How does this one sound? It sounds really good. That's lamb's head, is that correct? Yeah, I'm excited. I haven't had that before. <laughs> yeah, this is not just beef. This is like lamb's head right here. Mm. That's good. Wow. That thing is as crunchy and fresh as it gets. The meat's very tender. That's good. Yeah. I've had these uh, flautas before where the meat inside was like so dried up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a tragedy, really. But this one is perfect. Kind of looks like, uh, what, like a brisket meat in some ways? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Okay, well, let's uh, let's try it. I send you my order normally. Mm. Oh, that's incredible. I want to do that thing just melts in your mouth. So tender. Mm. It's like it's tender and it's kind of fatty at the same time. So good. Absolutely. And I love this broth. You see how like thin and silky it is? It's nice and hot. Specialty dish here because this is really what the restaurant is all about. Like if you look at the menu, this is heavily advertised. So if you want a soup dish, this is the one you got to go with. I Thumbs highly up. recommend, yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep, signature dish right here. It's worth a two hour drive for me to get, <laughs> get here just to try that. That's good. Okay. I haven't had anything else like this in San Diego. Oh really? Yeah. Wow, you see, I'm taking this guy to try something new in San Diego and I don't even live in San Diego. You said you've had the grasshoppers before, right? I've had them a few times, yeah. Okay, it's not too bad for you? It's not too bad. You don't taste the flavor much. It's more of the uh, psych experience that you get. This is my first time having grasshoppers. <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot of things in my life, but this one, I haven't had yet. So that is why I'm very excited about trying it right now. I know it looks a little creepy since they're bugs that crawl around the restaurant, <laughs> but you know, they're popular, especially with the Oaxacan region of Mexico. Yeah, so this is a very popular Oaxacan dish right here. Mmm. It's bursting with flavor, actually. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like what I predicted. It's a little bit crispy. Mm -hmm. You know, it definitely has like a chew to it. And um, is that like a garlic flavor or something? It's definitely garlicky. Also, some peppers in there. Yeah, it's garlicky. It is. Ooh, it's kind of spicy, too. Yeah, it's got a kick to it. Oh, you know what? You can make tacos with these. You can. You can. Grab some tortillas. Dude, let's do it. On top. Avocado and then some of this salsa inside. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. Mmm. Mmm. 
That's actually quite tasty. It is. Like, I don't even think I'm eating grasshoppers. I mean, I don't know what's in there specifically, but it tastes good. It does taste good. I would get that again, surprisingly. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> um, I mean, just, just the way it is already, mm. I think it it's fun to munch on. But when you put it in here, I feel like now it's, it's like a meal, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, instead of a little treat, yeah. it's just yeah, as a taco. Yeah. I'm down. Don't be afraid, guys. It's <laughs> actually really good. This is the uh, that big piece of grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. Mexican grilled cheese. It's almost kind of like, um, have you ever had an Indian dosa before? I have not. Okay, well, it looks very similar to this, but it's not made of cheese. Yeah, but this one, they say you're supposed to rip it off and dip it in there. Let's do it. Would you like to do it first? I would love to. All right, Kyle's gonna break the ice, or break the cheese, I would say. <laughs> Mmm. 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 Yum. There's like a party going on in my <laughs> mouth now. It's like grilled cheese without the bread. You gotta admit, that's pretty good, huh? That's good. Especially with the avocado. Mm hmm. So you do taste it really like that salty, mm -hmm. cheesy flavor. Yeah. Crispy, and then the avocado, you know, gives it that creamy avocado flavor. Mm hmm. It's a good combination. It's a good combination. Yeah, another one of their house specialties here. I feel like I'm really discovering Mexican food for the first time. I mean, from LA, I've had a lot of Mexican food there. I had a, I did a Mexican food tour when I was in LA. Mm. Covered like 10 different spots. Nice. But even those 10, I've not had some of those these dishes here. That's Can you awesome. believe that? That's awesome. This, I always judge a Mexican restaurant by how good they can do a pastor taco. Mm. Oh, it's like salty, it's crispy, it's tender. Everything good about a pastor taco. I'm having so much fun. This is great. It is. Yeah, guys, you gotta come here. This, is, this place is really impressive. Oh man, now I can see what everybody's raving about. Oh yeah, here's another one of the popular things on the menu. This is the alambres. I've never seen anything like this before. So tacos with uh, bell pepper, bacon, onion, cheese. And there's uh, some beef in there, I think, as well. Wow, these tacos are huge. It's loaded. I mean, loaded with so many things in here. Whoa. Mm. Yeah, I definitely taste the bacon. Yeah, I like this because there's a combination of meats in there and then the uh, the bell pepper, which kind of almost like a, like a fajitas type feel to mm -hmm. it. Which tastes very familiar to me. Yeah, and then the melted cheese in the taco really tastes Melted it cheese, oh yeah. So like I said, this has really been such a fascinating experience to me, even coming from Los Angeles and mm -hmm. trying all this. Is there a, a favorite, like anything that really stood out to you? Man, there's so much good things. Um, <clears throat> I think the best thing I had was definitely the lamb head uh, flautas. Those, the flavor was incredible. It was crispy, it was moist in the middle. The, the verde salsa on top with the cheese. Oh, it's just all around, it was good. Oh, I totally agree with you. That's a really good dish. Yeah, this one I like because there's just so much meat in there. Yeah. They have the bell pepper, the cheese. I mean, it's like a flavor bomb in your mouth. Yeah, you got three different types of meat and all of that mixed together, it's, it's good. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, all of these things that we had today were really good in its own way. And you know, I can't miss this one, the uh, oh, the soup. So much flavor. Yeah, this beef head soup. This is what made them popular, what put them on the map. So this one is definitely one of my favorites too. Me too. Yeah, but it just kind of depends on what you want. I mean, because they have so many foods. So when you're here in the Chula Vista area, or even if you're in downtown San Diego, drive all the way here because this food I think it's really worth the drive. Yeah, it's worth the drive. I don't come down here much, I'd come back for this. Oh yeah, you hear that, right? <laughs> if you are visiting San Diego, you cannot miss Balboa Park. It is a 1,200 acre site that holds everything from restaurants to museums to all kinds of historical monuments. Now here is one tourist attraction you can visit if you love to walk and to sightsee for free. By the way, I'm very new here, so I'm not gonna know exactly everything that's around here. So it's kind of a discovery process for me as well. Maybe what I'll do is go into the Casa del Prado. What is this? I don't know, but it looks so interesting. Looks like it's inviting me to come in.
I think this is where the botanical gardens are. It looks like it's closed and I already knew this when I researched online. But yeah, hopefully that this thing will open up when it's remodeled. Now this is something you might have seen in a lot of TV shows and movies. This pond that leads all the way down to this uh, kind of Mexican Spanish like building. I seen it before but I never knew exactly where it was and now I found out it's here in San Diego. I'm pretty sure you can be here for at least half a day if you wanted to. Maybe throw in the San Diego Zoo, full day right there. And as you can see behind me there's another museum, the San Diego Museum of Art. I have concluded that if you are a museum fan, especially art museum fans, then this is your spot right here. You can have a nice day looking at so many of these museums. How many can you go to in one day? That's the question. I feel like when I walk through here, I get a feel of Europe, like Rome or Paris, you know, the historical sites that you would see if you were to go to those cities. So just to kind of imagine that with some of that Mexican influence as well here in San Diego, it makes for a really beautiful getaway experience. Just to give you an idea of how big this Balboa Park is, here are all the things you could possibly do here at this park. You see that? Whoa! And that's not even it. Let me show you the other side. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can see it guys, but yeah, there are more things you can do here. Okay, so this is the Spanish Village Art Center. Seems like there's uh, something to see at every corner of this park, which is so exciting. Yeah, certainly does have a Spanish personality. The buildings, the tiles, even these colors, all magnificent. So I guess this Spanish area is for those who love art and painting and jewelry and maybe even get some coffee so that you can sit around and hang out and relax, which is what I need to do because I've been walking so much, just building up a sweat. Balboa Park is really big, so this is just a small sample of what you can see if you want to walk around and sightsee for free. Later that afternoon, I headed over to Pacific Beach, which is one of the best beaches to visit in San Diego. Great scenery and great food. If you don't know which beach to visit in SD, then consider this spot, especially if you love surfing. So it looks like the sun is about to set. It is kind of close to 7 p.m. Uh, maybe if I have time, I'll come back here during the day when it's brighter, but this boardwalk back here is pretty much the main attraction. It's almost like an equivalent to Venice Beach boardwalk, I would say, in some ways. It's a little bit narrow, so you have to kind of be careful because there's bikers and people uh, skateboarding everywhere. But even at this hour, there's a lot of people walking on this road and on the beach. Wow, that's incredible. Wow, will you look at this? They even have a farmer's market that runs on Tuesday nights here in Pacific Beach. That's pretty cool. I wish I could eat some more, but uh, I'm so full. So full, so I'm pretty much going to end the night. The next day started out with lunch at Mike's Red Tacos, which some say are the best birria tacos you can find in San Diego. This Mexican eatery has a pretty cool vibe, and the food is pretty stellar. So if you like all things birria, then this is the restaurant for you. Dipping it and goes right on the grill. So yeah, they cook this so that it gets really crispy on top, like perfect crispiness. Oh, that's like a mountain of meat right there. It's like catering size. <laughs> okay, so yep, that's the meat that goes on top of the tacos. You see how it's expertly folded? into that taco shape. Chili oil, the house-made chili oil. This is the magic right there. Okay, yep, that's the order right there. See two tacos, some chips. Oh, mountain of chips, yes. And they have the salsa bar as well, right next to the door, six different flavors. Red salsa, which is spicy and green salsa medium chunky salsa medium jalapeno salsa spicy and orange salsa spicy af yikes i'm gonna stay away from that one sorry uh yellow salsa this one is sweet actually 
So this restaurant got really packed only like 30 minutes after it opened. So that's why I have to start with my first one. And then the others that I ordered, uh, they're gonna bring it out a little bit later. So yeah, I'm gonna definitely enjoy this one, which is the most popular thing on the menu. This is their popular two beauty with cheese combo. That's the beauty of tacos to the left. It's loaded with a lot of chips. Does come with the sides of veggies, like the pickles, onions, uh, cilantro, which you're supposed to put in the tacos. Of course, with generous amount of lime drizzled. And that's the actual soup itself, where you can dip the tacos in or you straight up drink it. Definitely gonna load it with all of this veggies that they gave me. Don't wanna put it to waste, obviously. And plenty of that lime juice. Oh yeah, definitely drizzle that on. Because it the lime enhances the flavor so much. Mm. Oh man. It's like forget about the rest of the food. I can just stick to this and I'll be so happy. Mm. Wow, that is mind-blowing. It's cheesy, it's so meaty. That beef is so tender you definitely need to add those veggies inside because it makes this crunchy taco very refreshing. So now it is time to dip this taco into the consomme to really enhance the flavor and to make it like a complete experience. Oh, man. Yeah, you definitely have to dip it in the consomme. Before that, it was already so good, like the crispiness of the taco, the tenderness of the meat, cheese, the veggies that make it so refreshing, gives it a good crunch. But now you dip it in the soup, it has like this wetness that touches your heart when you eat it. Oh wow, it just feels so good. Oh wow, even the soup tastes so good too. The beauty of ramen, yep, they have beauty of ramen. This is the Mexican take on a very classic Japanese food. So it's, it's pretty much consomme with the beauty of beef and the ramen noodles are all the way in the bottom. And look at this cool one. This is called the crunch stack. I think this is kind of like a take on the uh, Taco Bell item. So this is basically, uh, according to their menu, twin tostadas stuffed with uh, beef birria and there's also guacamole, beans, cilantro, onions wrapped in flour tortilla. And it's worth mentioning that their chips are house made, house marinated, and this cheese dip, this queso I heard is really bomb. Like when these go, two go together. And this is pretty cool. This ramen comes with chopsticks. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a pretty Asian experience. Trying to keep it as authentic as possible in some ways. Oh, I've seen this many times but I've never had a beauty of ramen before. So now I am going to be trying a beauty of ramen for the first ever time in my life. A little bit thick, almost kind of like drinking a curry ramen soup in some ways. So the consomme tastes exactly like the other one. Really delicious beef flavored. Oh, I gotta add a lot of uh, lime juice in because I heard that lime juice is what enhances the flavor. Oh yeah, here we go. I still can't believe I'm trying this for the first time in my life. Mm. I can never go back to Japanese ramen ever again. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, this is actually very good in its own way. Kind of takes this ramen in a different direction than the traditional like tonkotsu ramen or um, miso ramen, shoyu ramen, curry ramen. This is truly a fascinating mix of uh, Mexico and Japan right here. It's actually surprisingly good. <laughs> I like it. You can't go wrong with the soup. Seriously, and the beef just melts in your mouth. So if you guys have not tried a birria ramen before, maybe today is the day you gotta come try it because it is really that delicious. So this, I would say, is kind of like, it looks like a burrito in some ways, but then at the same time, it looks kind of like a panini. Well, let's see what it tastes like. Mm. 
Wow, that was delicious. Because it's been pressed, so it, obviously it's going to kind of have like that panini flavor. I love the way that they stuffed inside with so much of this beauty of meat and, and avocado and cheese, onions. This is something I've never had before and it's really delicious. So yes, if you get this one, you're really going to like it. And this queso dip, I heard is really amazing. That's why I had to get it. <laughs> Wow. Seriously, that is like one of the most delicious hot queso dishes I've had. That cheese is just so cheesy. And it's like very hot as well. Seriously, I just want to order these and I want to take it as a dip. Every single time I eat chips from now on, forget about the salsa. I got to have these chips with this queso. Oh yeah. Mm. When you come here, you definitely need to order the tacos. Number one bestseller. I would come here, of course, just for that one. And you know what was also good was this cheese dip. Wow, this uh, really creamy cheese dip was just, ah. It's like really one of the best cheese dips I've ever had in my whole life. You definitely need to get that with the chips. A trip to San Diego is not complete without a stop at Old Town San Diego. The San Diego Historic Park is the place to visit if you want to get a taste of San Diego history. Don't believe me? Well, check it out for yourself. Uh, pastor at King's Cross Church in San Diego. This is the absolutely. guy you got to check out for, for your local church. Yeah, <laughs> so, absolutely. All right, so you're going to take me around and show yes, me around I today. Am. All Hello, right. Hello, everyone. Hello. Okay. Um, yeah, this spot, every time I have family, come visit us from England we always come to Old Town and we come here because it's so historical and it's got so much charm um, as you can see it's got the Spanish colonial just the Mexican vibes it's really cool here sometimes when you come here they have things set up for um, a concert and a show they've taken the seats out but sometimes they have seats here you're right, Obed. This place has a charm to it. It really looks like you walked into a village in Mexico. Don't know about the food. I haven't eaten here, but it's, I'm sure the food is good, but I think you pay for the experience. You pay for this outdoor dining, um, you know, within a historic um, environment. If you like churros, You've got to come here, you've got to come and try one. It's excellent. And I think, look, it's all fresh. And I think earlier I popped in to say hello and she said she had just made a batch. Mmm. Crunchy. Mmm. Really good. Ah, that's like a, a really good classic churro right there. Really good classic churro. The, where we were before, kind mm -hmm. of that area is over there and you kind of come out and this is this is kind of more open air and there are a few shops down there and the first shop I want to point out to you is the cigar. Oh wow. Oh, they like pipes. It smells so good. I don't Think smoke so. cigars or pipes but I love the smell. Oh you do? Okay. <laughs> It has that vibe, like you're in a western or something. You're walking and it feels like, you know, you're trying to get to the next thing and then you are like, what is this place? And you come in, incredibly colorful, cultural, um, cultural items. You know what it kind of reminds me of is, mm -hmm. uh, have you been to Alvera Street in Los Angeles? No, I haven't. Okay, it's yeah, it's kind of close to Chinatown. Yes. But there is this really historic area called Olvera Street where yeah. it's like a walkway. Yeah. Just like this, where it looks like you walked into a Mexican village. Wow. Open yeah. open market basically. Cool, isn't it? It I is. Love it. Yeah, you come to Old Town. One of the best ways to get a fuller, more educated understanding of Old Town is to get on a tour bus, and they take you around and they give you a historical tour, and as you can hear. Someone's giving instructions, they're about to leave, but you go to all the spots and they explain to you what they are and the history behind them. All right, I love gardening. I do a lot of gardening and stuff, flowers, 
food, I grow food, and I love this place because it's got a, some really creative, artsy plant pots. Look at this. Even when I went down to Puerto Nuevo, you see a lot of these pottery shops on the road. I mean, me personally, I don't know if I'm that into it, but it's always good to look at. I know Obed's really into it. And every time I come old town, I come here because I've got three kids and they're like, we want to go to the candy shop, we want to go to there. And of course, we come here, lots of really kind of traditional, well-known candy, but obviously they've got their own uniquely branded candy as well. They make their own candy here? Yep, they make it here, um, handmade. Those are real insects in there? Yeah, they are ants. Oh, black ants. And so you're enjoying this and the goal is to get to several of those ants and enjoy the protein. And I've used this word a lot. The whole goal of this particular part of San Diego is to have you experience um, old school, old town San Diego, Mexico. Immediately after, I drove over to the Gas Slam Quarter, which is located in downtown San Diego. And if you want a restaurant recommendation here, check out Rey Dogado, which is the oldest Brazilian steakhouse in San Diego. The building is so vintage. They have an awesome buffet station and all you can eat Brazilian barbecue for $67.95, which includes a nice lobster tail. Now here is a restaurant you should visit for a very special occasion. Oh yeah, let's check it out. Capri salad. And this is what's called sal, sal picao, which is a Brazilian chicken salad. I don't think I've seen this one before. That's pretty cool. Uh, Brazilian potato salad, uh, quinoa salad, which I always like, spinach salad, cucumber salad, and broccoli salad. Oh, very healthy stuff. Mushroom salad and artichoke. I've seen that in many Brazilian steakhouses. Uh, pasta salad and uh, eggplant. Yeah, like some sort of roasted eggplant. And moving on to the other side, you got some fresh assorted fruits, watermelon, pineapple, all that good stuff. Uh, wow, what is this? Brazilian sweets? Okay, sweet potato, uh, pumpkin and coconut, guava, banana. Looks very good. Okay, olives and some beets and asparagus, roasted sweet potato salad and spicy apple house salad. I've never heard of this one, that's pretty cool. Uh, Caesar salad, okay. And then we have some vinaigrette and sun-dried tomatoes. Yep, that's down there. Chimichurri and Rey Delgado sauce. Yes, this is a house special sauce. So here's the hot food section. Let's see what they got here. They got some white rice, feijoada, Brazilian black bean stew, uh, let's see, fried bananas. Wow, they kind of look like sausages in some ways. And then white fish. Okay, that looks good. Uh, roasted cauliflower and uh, mashed potatoes. That is pretty rocking. Let's see, French fries. They kind of look like waffle fries. And some uh, Parmesan cream pasta. Okay. Let's see, roasted Brussels sprouts. That looks pretty good. And what is this? Oh, it's uh, like a lobster bisque. I always like that. Okay, we've got some, uh, let's see, what is this, F farofa? Yep, and they do have the cheese. Oh yeah, you gotta have this as part of your Brazilian meal. The cheese, as well as some nuts, like the cashew and the pecan. So this is an open kitchen kind of, where you can see all the meats being grilled back here. It's pretty crazy, the flames are going pretty hot. Ooh, it's very, very hot back here. But yeah, they're gonna bring this meat out to your table and you can do all you can eat. So I got a little bit of feijoada. Now this I can make a meal in of itself, but I wanna concentrate more on the Brazilian barbecue meat. So just a little bit of feijoada. Mm, yeah, that's good. It's like very uh, home style. That's how you feel like when you eat it. Okay, what about these bananas? They look pretty cool. Mmm. Those bananas are super sweet. And very soft, it just melts in your mouth when you eat it. I love it. 
Oh yeah, what about these eggplants? They're like caramelized to perfection. Oh, those eggplants. I think I could go back and get a lot more of them. I just love eggplants. This one is cooked to perfection. It melts in your mouth when you bite into it. Kind of smoky as well. That's how I like it. Yeah, seriously. If I didn't have to eat so much meat, I think I would get a lot more of these eggplants. Okay, so this one is the top sirloin with garlic, right? Uh -huh, same as this cut here. Yeah. Though we cut this one in cubes. In cubes. Garlic to it. Got it. Picanha. Yeah. Oh yeah. I always love starting with this one. Good. Good, good, good. And then I also want to try some of this garlic beef. I've tried this many times too, this top sirloin garlic beef. I always feel garlic can flavor any steaks and make it taste so good. Yeah. So this is always going to be a safe bet when you go to these Brazilian steakhouses. Wow, these are big pork ribs, man. All right. This is the beef tri-tip, right? Our, okay, thank you. One is good for now? Yep, one is good. These pork ribs are piping hot. That's why I got to pick it up with my fork. You know, maybe I could use my fingers. Ah, yeah, fork and finger. Oh, there's some sort of a glaze on it that almost tastes like American barbecue pork ribs. Yeah, it's, it's sweet. Okay. Try tip time. Always like this. Ooh, that try tip is really good. It's like a very beefy flavor. Amazing. So here is the lobster. One per customer. Hopefully it'll taste just as good as it smells. They give you some butter, so definitely enjoy a lot of butter. Mm. I mean, well, I don't know what else to say. It's like a very classic tasting American lobster. And by the way, I love the ambiance of this restaurant. It's in this very old 1800s Victorian era like building. It's super fancy. It's like eating in a very old school upscale restaurant. Hey, you got the lobsters, you got the steak. Yeah. All right, cinnamon pineapple with honey. Okay, this is the lamb chops. All right, so I got mine cooked to about medium. Whoa. Yeah, I needed that. That pineapple is so extremely sweet. Sweet, cinnamony, honey flavored. Heard it's good for digestion too. Oh, I definitely need that after eating all this meat. Ah. Mmm. Mm. I think if this whole Brazilian barbecue meal was just composed of that pineapple, I think I'd be very happy. Man, that lamb chop is so juicy. There's like so much juice coming out of it. Do you see this, guys? That's crazy. Juicy and extremely tender. That's the way I like my lamb chops. If you love juicy, tender lamb chops, they got it here. And this is the Brazilian flan. This is a great way to finish off your Brazilian meal. Oh, I always love to get these. You know, I think this is one of the best flans I've had. Oh, I can already tell. You have to get the flan here. It is really incredible. Day three begins with a tour of Seaport Village in downtown SD. This is an outdoor shopping complex full of gift shops and eateries, as well as a scenic ocean view by the pier. Here is another one of my favorite San Diego destinations. One you cannot miss when you are in downtown. The directory, they do have these directories as well that will show you all the uh, casual dining and shopping and even some of these activities you can do. All right, this one looks like it's kind of popping right now. Spill the beans, coffee and bagel. Wow, very popular, there's a lot of people here. And they even have a little market, seaport market. Okay, that's pretty cool. Get some drinks and snacks in there. So there's still more if you go north across the street. So seaport village does kind of extend a little bit more, which is good. 
it might seem pretty cold, but it actually isn't. It's really perfect. I think it's about 71 or 72 degrees. So when you come here, the only thing you have to pay for is uh, parking. Beer for one hour, I think it's about a dollar or dollar 25, but it's not that expensive. Where should I go? To the left or to the right? Take your pick. So the tour continues. As you can see, there are quite a bit of things to see in uh, Seaport Village. Yeah, at least uh, 50 shops from what I heard. Oh, what is this? Santa's workshop. Is this thing in business all year round? Well, after all, Christmas season is coming soon, so maybe this is where you want to go to get your nice ornaments, decorations. So this shop is open all year round. I got a confirmation. Yeah, so definitely come here if you want to get your Christmas goods, um, especially during the season, but even in January or February, it's still here for you guys. So shop away here at Seaport Village for your Christmas needs. And then next to Santa's workshop, uh, there's this jewelry store that uh, I heard they sell a lot of stuff that's imported from Istanbul. Oh, wow. Okay, that's pretty good. Well, I don't know if these gems are imported from, I think these are from all over the world. But still, they're very nice though. So yes, all this stuff. Yep, you see that? All from Turkey, Istanbul. Man, I don't think I s see shops like this that often. That's so cool. Necklaces, okay. Looks like this one's about $60, okay. But still, it's beautiful. Made out of amethyst, this tree. That is so incredible. Look at that craftsmanship. Oh man. They even have this chart here that tells you, I guess, some sort of meaning to every crystal. Yes, like the amethyst right there, and the opal, and uh, jasper. Wow, this is pretty cool. Oh, mosaic handcraft. Here's another interesting store I heard about in this shopping center. That is crazy. Look at all this. All these lamps are handmade from what I heard. I've never seen anything like it before. It's all from Turkey. You see that they even have Turkish coffee here as well. Isn't that crazy? Oh yeah, this is really no joke, this store. Everything is literally from Turkey. I like it. I want to take all these and just design my room just like this with all these beautiful handcrafted lamps from Turkey. So yes, this is a store you definitely need to check out when you're here. Yeah, I think it's really worth visiting. If you're looking for a restaurant nearby, then you gotta visit the Fish Market, which is a seafood restaurant with a great oceanside view. It is the biggest seafood market restaurant in San Diego with an amazing menu. I mean, if you're by the pier, how could you not get some seafood, right? Salmon? Wow. Yes. I think this is the first time I've ever seen like a whole like yeah. salmon uncut. It, of course you know it's not going to be orange, but in your mind you still expect an orange fish. <laughs> oh! There's the orange. Oh. oh. Wouldn't you like to just take that whole thing oh, and eat yes, it? Please. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. Uh, when was this caught? Today. Today. Caught today. So it's as fresh as it can yes. get, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, I would expect nothing less. Right. Ahi tuna, okay. So they got some salmon, mm -hmm. ahi tuna, and they do have poke on the menu. For the poke, that's for sashimi. Oh, this is for sashimi. Okay, yeah, they got sashimi too. Very uh, Japanese inspired. Let's see. Oh, oh wow, yeah. They got every single fish and seafood. Lobster tail. Yeah. Oh, okay, lobster yes, tails. We'll just take that home. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's the lobster. Wow. Hmm. Very yeah. creamy. Yeah. Got a strong tomato taste. You got oh, potato, wow. vegetables. I don't think I got any clam. I feel like I need to get some clam. You gotta really dig yeah. in there. They taste different. They taste different. This is more like tomato-y. It reminds me more of like a, just a tomato soup. But this one is kind of, it's more unique. Yeah. I would say that this is really like more of your classic yeah, clam chowder exactly. taste. So I think uh, I would prefer mine more like on the original me side. Me too, me too. But still, I, I mean, I do like the tomato taste though. Okay. It's, well, it's enjoyable in its own just, way. You know, we should just switch here because... <laughs> mm hmm <Good>. That's right. <laughs> That's bad. I'm going to pour a little bit of this kind of vinaigrette on here. I'm just going to put everything on okay, it's here. It's going to get messy. This isn't going to be pretty, but we're going to just do this. Mmm. Mm. 
surprisingly pretty magical. <laughs> Okay, I like the fact that they loosened it already. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, um, that's okay. definitely very helpful. I'm not a fan of the horseradish. I, I, you have to try this. It's got shallots, vinegar, some garlic. Like this, the flavoring in this, this, this thing here, it's pretty amazing, really. Really? Yeah. Pour some more. Okay, let's do it. Oh. I mean, we've got to go a bit easy. Maybe I overdid that a bit. Okay. Mm. What do you think? Right? I like it. That vinegar taste always makes it so mm. bright. Yeah. Okay, look at this lobster. I'm, oh yeah. This doesn't happen regularly, so this is a treat for us here. Cut it up and then uh, I would say be generous with the lemon. Okay. Would you like some lemon on yours? Yeah, why not? Oh yeah. I'm usually a fan of lemon, but I'm kind of feeling just the straight up butter. Mm. And they cooked it in front of us. Yeah, they cooked that guy right in front of us. Yeah, the lobsters are definitely a home run here. Yeah. I really like this. Mm -hmm. And the reason I like it, it's just because of just, it's so meaty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So meaty. Yeah. So good. Ooh, it's nice. They have this corn puree in here. I got some potatoes. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Oh, it's crispy. It's really flavorful. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and this corn looks pretty amazing too. It's got like sausage in it. I think it's like diced sausage or something. Mm. I never would have thought corn puree and calamari to go together with the crispy on the twist. It's got chorizo in it. I just saw that on the menu. Well, that's California for you. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, this is a really good dish. I, I, I like it a lot. I could keep eating that. No, sure. <laughs> yeah. But we need to save some room. We still got Scallops. this one. Mm -hmm. All right, we're we gonna just go for it. Or are we gonna cut this? Are we gonna do? No, we're just gonna go for it. Okay, Forget elegance. elegance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that just melted completely. It's like you don't even need a knife to cut that. No, you don't. In fact, we should show them. Yeah. Oh. Just kind of like flakes. Yeah. I know it's cooked perfectly. Should we try the sides? Absolutely. I don't even know what this is. It looks like it looks big like pasta to me, like a also no pasta or is it big pieces of risotto or something? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. It kind of tastes like pasta. Hmm. A bit doughy. Mm hmm We've learned something new today. No. Yeah. So this one is uh, like a the crusted uh, calamari steaks. Calamari steak. Okay. Mm hmm. It, it needs a dip. I think it needs, it needs a, a dip. dip. Yeah. It needs some salt or some yeah. Let's add some dip. Mm. Much okay. better. This is, uh, I think, one of the highlight items here, from what I heard. Yes. The fresh. Because it's, lo it's the most local, most common, they said, type of fish here. Absolutely. Okay, this is weird, but this tastes like chicken. <laughs> I'm like, is really? it that grilled? You don't know think? Let's see. Mmm. Mine tastes like fish. <laughs> Maybe it's the grill, that kind of flavor from the grill. Yeah. That reminds me of it. That is really interesting. Yeah. Obed, try that and tell me what you think. <laughs> oh, it's not that bad, Obed. <laughs> it's a tender piece of fish. Mm. Okay, good You know what? I like this. Okay. Honestly. Let me get another one. Oh yeah. Don't you think it tastes I like, like chicken? No, no, it's, it doesn't taste like okay, chicken. Fine. I like... <laughs> how does this taste yeah, like chicken? It tastes like chicken to me. I really like this because it's really meaty. I love really meaty, high protein meat. And to get this from fish is awesome. I really like this. Honestly, I do. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna... It's still pretty hot too. Yeah. Mm. Wow, it's so crispy. Okay. I feel like we need a little bit of vinegar, you know. Um, it's good. It, it's different to English fish and chips, but it's. In I feel what like way it's, would you say? In what way? Uh, I don't know. 
the flavor. Maybe it's a different kind of fish that they use. Okay. But it's really good quality. Yeah. And it's not soggy, it's crispy. Yeah. The fish is all flaky. Mm -hmm. And the fries, you say, um, it's actually different there, right? Well, we call them chips. Yeah, chips. Yeah. And but what you and then chips are crisps. Mm -hmm. So okay, <laughs> it's confusing. But you said that the potato there is actually tastes yeah, different, right? Yeah, yeah. I will say I'm a little biased when it comes to um, British potatoes. There's just something about them that I've never had here. It's just the quality of just the potato itself. Like no matter how you cook it, it tastes significantly different. So you would say this is kind of more like typical American fries, right? This is American fries. This is not British. Yeah. Okay. By the way, do you like American fries? Do you want me to be honest here? Yeah, I don't everyone's gonna hate me if I tell them what I think. <laughs> yeah, eggs and hens, right? So if you're gonna do fish and chips, then no, I wouldn't want to fry like this. But with like burgers, with other stuff, yeah. then I'm a big fan. I'm all oh about really? It. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was the question I was yeah, asking you. Yeah. This is something that's pretty unique. The shrimp. This is huge. Mm. Wow. That's a big guy. Yeah. No, I, I just like it because it's crispy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the shrimp itself is very, um, it's very tender too. Mm -hmm. Although it is kind of off the city of San Diego, I encourage you to make a trip to Coronado Island. Tourists come here especially for the Coronado Hotel, which is quite a sight to behold. This hotel is worth visiting, especially for that really nice beach that is in the back. Yes, let's go into a piece of history. Oh wow. Wow, it's so dark in here. <laughs> That's so cool. It really does look like something from the 19th century. So classy, so vintage. You really rarely see hotels like this anymore. You see, I was down there just a moment ago. That's the lobby area when you first come in. And uh, second floor, I'm not sure exactly what is on the second floor. Well, I guess there are some guest rooms. Look at these wall paintings. That's kind of an interesting design. I don't think I expected this when I came up here. Established 1888, gifts with a storied past. This looks like a very historical gift shop. Oh, wow, Hotel del Coronado sparkling wine. Oh, I remember seeing this movie from a long time ago. And it's very apparent that a lot of celebrities have stayed here. Maybe one day I'll stay here as well and be one of the lucky ones. And this is the outside area when you exit the lobby. It's pretty nice. You can see that it's at least one, two, three, four, four, two, four stories high. Okay, I think I found it. Once you go outside of the hotel, there's this lovely beach that's waiting for you out here. Oh yeah. It's kind of a cloudy day for a beach day, but still there are some people out here. I like it. So spacious. It's like not too many people on this beach. You see, what did I tell you? That's the hotel right back there. What a lovely view, isn't it? If you can actually stay at that hotel, power to you. You can come out here, you can have a beautiful view of the ocean, play in the sand. If you love all-you-can-eat buffets, then here is the go-to restaurant, 100 Seafood Grill, which is the most popular Vegas-style buffet in San Diego. Go on Thursday nights, because that's when they have the all-you-can-eat lobster tails on the menu. I don't know about you, but that sounds good enough for me. Crab crackers right there, oh yeah, so this is the seafood section. Uh, seafood mix with the clams, the mussels, the shrimp. Never seen that before, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, lobster claws, yeah. Definitely they have lobster claws here as well. And uh, the crab legs. Oh, these go very fast, so you gotta get them while you can. And mussels, oh yeah, mussels. And let's see, got some cocktail sauce. And uh, oysters, yep, these are the oysters. You can kind of see, okay, buried in a whole bunch of ice. And that is the shrimp. Salad section, kale salad, green salad, and then we got broccoli salad down there. This is coleslaw. Oh man, it's kind of hard to see. Let's see, quinoa salad and spinach salad. 
Let's see, uh, crab salad. And this is the 100 salad. Yeah, their house special salad. Let's see, mushroom salad. You can kind of see that, right? Kind of, okay. And then Caesar salad. What do we got down there? Cucumber, and that's the spicy octopus. Uh, let's see, bean sprouts. Okay, I'm seeing some stuff here I've never seen before in other buffet restaurants. Spicy beef tendon and uh, tofu. Yeah, it looks like some sort of fried tofu. Uh, sp spicy seaweed, okay. Oh yeah, this is all the lobsters. I think it's one per turn, but they've got a lot of them up there. Yes, they do because these run out really quickly. So as I've said in a lot of my buffet videos, there's only so much I can eat, so that's why I have to be very wise with what I eat, especially with round number one. And if I come on a particular day, I'm gonna be eating my favorites, the good stuffs, such as the lobster tail, lobster claw, and the crab legs and oysters. You know, I haven't had too much salad on this trip to tell you the truth, I need to get my greens. Well, that's like pretty good. It's so cheesy. So there's the saltiness of the cheese along with the sweetness of the tangerine pieces in here. It makes for a very refreshing, bright salad. Now it's oyster time. Gonna dress it up with lemon. Mm. Mm. Be very careful because there's these little pieces in there. But it's, oh, that thing just melts in your mouth. It's like a really good classic oyster. I don't know how many I can eat in this sitting. I think the most I did was like maybe five or six. But anyways, let's see, what about the crabs? All right, so the crabs, I do admit, they're quite a bit of work. That's why some people don't like to get them. But if you can get past the cracking part, then you're gonna have some nice, delicious crab meat in between to enjoy. Wow, those crabs are really chilled so perfectly and it's sweet too they taste pretty much like the crabs i've had at a lot of other of these types of buffets and i say that in a good way because every time most of these places serve the crabs it's actually always pretty good i have no complaints about it whatsoever all right what about we do a lobster claw this is going to get kind of messy it's not glamorous work to do i do admit i don't like doing this that much but once you get inside to the meat, oh yeah, then it's pretty worth it. And since there's a lot of meat inside, definitely take advantage of that butter. Mm. Oh, there's too much meat on here. That's a good thing. I got lucky with these very huge claws. Oh, you see that? Now it's time for the lobsters. Okay, this is what I came here for. Let's give this a shot. And it looks like it's been baked with some sort of spices. I don't think I've seen it made this way before. It doesn't have that typical mayo sauce that they put over the lobsters. Whoa, it's like very chewy. Okay. Mm. Here, watch. That's a lobster size, so it's not like one of those huge main lobsters. It's a very typical lobster that they use in most of these type of international buffets. But still, I like it. Looks like I'm gonna go back and get some more. Now moving on to the hot food sections. This is something I always get excited about. Let's see, we got some shrimp and some string beans and clam and mussel, okay, and chow mein, and fried rice, okay, kind of filler foods, but still a lot of people love them. Orange flavored chicken, beef steak, oh, that actually looks pretty good, okay. Uh, spicy crawfish, takes a little work to do this, but it's always pretty good. Got some clams, oh, sea snails, really? Okay, that's pretty cool. And then uh, scallops, fried crab and fried banana Chinese egg rolls sesame ball and uh, shrimp tempura of some sort I think this is almost like the ones you find at dim sum restaurants Let's see chicken wings that's uh, chicken nuggets with fries looks like kids items maybe let's see I think that's honey walnut shrimp yeah it is and uh, salt and pepper shrimp 
Moving on, you see there's a lot of stuff. Barbecue pork and uh, mussels, baked mussels, which are always pretty pleasant. And this is the baked prawns. And a lot of salmon that's kind of all drenched in this kind of a sauce. It looks pretty good. Grilled vegetables, yeah, potato, zucchini, seafood pasta with Alfredo sauce. And I believe this is the prime rib. Yes, they have prime rib here, okay? And along with the sauces you need for the prime rib, it's all ready to go. This is the teppanyaki section where you can pretty much make your stir fry Benihana style. Uh, chow mein, bean sprouts, mushrooms, onions, uh, jalapeno, and some pineapple, carrots. I think that's squid, I think so, yeah. Let's see, scallops, a shrimp, and that is your steak. Looks like they have their soup station as well. Oh, lobster bisque, that's pretty fancy. Uh, seafood mix, okay, anything with seafood's good. Hot and sour soup and clam chowder. Had this earlier today. I think this might be the first or maybe the second time I've had crawfish in a buffet restaurant. Don't have it that often, don't know why. But today, that's all gonna change. Mm. Yeah, it's almost kind of like eating a little shrimp in some ways. Yeah, I think two is enough. I'm moving on. So now I'm finally eating prime rib again. I think the last time I had prime rib at a buffet, especially was at Cafe Sierra. So it's good to be trying it again. And they cooked it pretty perfectly, it looks like. Oh yeah, oh it's good. Very tender and very juicy. Tastes just like a classic American prime rib, which you should always cook to about medium rare. What about these fried crabs? Yep, they have the crab legs up there, but they also have the, these little fried crabs as well. So this is a Chinese style fried crab. It's not unique to this restaurant because you'll find these in a lot of Asian slash Chinese buffets. All the meat is pretty much in the center. You're supposed to suck it out. But still, I always think it's good because I love stuff that's salted and fried, just like this crab. I mean, it's crab, right? So you definitely gotta eat it. And I wanna mention that they do have a pretty huge sushi section. And by the way, this restaurant got so busy. Oh man, such a short amount of time. All right, let's see what they got here. They got sea breeze, don't know what that is, but I guess it's all pretty good. Spicy tuna, always a very popular choice. Uh, dragon roll, Camino del Rio. Uh, it's like some sort of a California roll with a tempura crunch on top. Let's see, crunchy roll and uh, salmon special. Let's see, salmon roll, rainbow roll. Okay, this is the super crunch. Oh, those things look pretty nice. Uh, California roll, and this is the Philly roll. Uh, cream cheese in the center, not a fan of that. Baked crawfish, the mango Mexican. Baked salmon, spicy girl. Yeah, looks like they have their, a lot of their own inventions. The hundreds roll, I guess this is their house specialty. Then the sashimi section. Look at that, they got albacore, salmon, and yellowtail. And I think that's seared tuna. And now this is the nigiri section. We got salmon sushi. We got this crab one that's almost running out. Guess it's popular. Uh, shrimp. Octopus, the egg, which is tamago, uh, let's see, mackerel, and uh, squid, and this one, not sure what that is actually, and that one is like a snapper. Wow, looks like they have a dim sum section here as well. What do we got here? Sweet bun with bean paste, let's see, coconut bun, which looks like it's pretty popular, a sticky rice wrapped with pork, yep, very classic dim sum. Here we go with the next plate, and this one is mostly sushi. And of course, I did get my lobster another one because, I, like I said, I'm here for the lobster, so. Okay, so the yellowtail caught my eye. I think I'll do that first. Whoa. Oh, it's actually not bad. Yeah, that thing just melts in your mouth. Okay, thumbs up to that. So, so far the sashimi tastes really good. It's not like omakase quality, but still, for buffet, I've actually had worse, to tell you the truth. 
Yeah. Yeah, the sushi here is actually pretty decent. I was actually very skeptical before I ate it, but looks like it's actually pretty good. Not bad, not bad. So they have a gelato bar here. Not ice cream, gelato. Wow, that's impressive. Strawberry and uh, butter pecan, salted caramel, cotton candy, yeah, taro, let's see, Oreos, plain yogurt, coffee, pistachio, green tea, limon, chocolate, grapefruit, mango, watermelon, let's see, orange, pineapple, and vanilla, wow. All right, here it is, thank you. Pretty good dessert selections as I see here. Got the sweet mushroom soup, which is very Chinese, and this uh, chia, chia seeds type of a soup. And uh, let's see, lychee, I think. And then more desserts here. All of these are cookies. You see, they look pretty nice, huh? They have no names on it. I'm not sure what they are, but they all do look good. Oh yeah, more cookies down here, like almond cookies. Uh, M&M cookies, chocolate chip, raisin cookies, and uh, let's see, that might be a creme brulee, I think so. Wow, a whole bunch of cakes right here. You see that cheesecake, like with all the different glazes on top, and even a red velvet cake, chocolate cake, and more cakes down here, oh yeah. Before I came here, I heard a lot of things about 100 Seafood Buffet, and for the most part, the reviews are right. It's actually a pretty awesome buffet. I would say it's it's definitely one of the better buffets that I've been to in Southern California. Um, if you come on Thursday especially, you're gonna get the lobsters, the oysters, the crab, the sushi. Well, there you have it with my 72 hour trip to San Diego. Have you guys visited any of these restaurants or tourist spots? Drop that comment because I would love to hear your story or your suggestions. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you all in the next food adventure.